In my previous couple of videos, we learned what O2 and 3 did in terms of network developments in the year 2016. And now, carrying on from that sort of roller coaster ride, I'm going to talk in this video about what EE did in 2016. And this is sort of the next rise on the roller coaster after 3 did comparatively little preceded by O2 doing rather a lot. So EE has done quite a few developments in the year 2016, some of which have actually been very major milestones for a sort of modern network. So in April 2016, EE released their 4G calling, otherwise known as Voice Over LTE or Volte. Now, EE's Volte works on all their LTE bands, so 800, 1800, and 2600 seamlessly, so it's not like 3 where it only works on 800 megahertz. Also, EE's Volte works seamlessly with their Wi Fi calling, so if you're on a Wi Fi call and you leave the Wi Fi, your call then gets handed over onto 4G and vice versa. It does work very well as a very seamless product. Now, Volte combined with EE's general high load users and large number of high load users contributes to requiring a very high capacity network, especially on the 4G layer. Now, up until this year and for quite a lot of this year, EE has the base layer of 4G as a 20 megahertz paired carrier on 1800 megahertz, which is capable of around about up to 150 megabits per second. And then that was supplemented in high load areas by a 20 megahertz paired carrier on the 2600 megahertz band, which also being a 20 megahertz paired FTD carrier, can do about 150 megabits on its own. So carry aggregate them together and you can get 300 megabits per second. And actually some people on the right side did get actual speeds in the order of about 270, 280 megabits per second, even in quite sort of dense load areas. But of course some areas, especially with the sort of exponential rise in data use on LT networks, more capacity is required. And that comes in the form of a second 2600 megahertz carrier, which is 15 megahertz paired. Now, having the 20 megahertz paired on 1800 megahertz, the 20 megahertz paired on 2600 megahertz, and 15 megahertz paired on another 2600 megahertz carrier is a lot of spectrum. So it's 55 megahertz of FDD paired LTE spectrum which is capable of some really high speeds. So actually you're sort of looking at over 400 megabits per second and certainly inside the Wembley Stadium, I think about 350 megabits was obtained on sort of a public release device, which is an astonishingly high speed. But of course, when say Wembley Stadium is full, then clearly it'll be slower. So the additional 2600 layer isn't necessarily for producing ludicrously high speed but for producing capacity so that in future the very high load areas will continue to be performant instead of gradually getting slower and slower. One user earlier today sent me these screenshots from a 3CA site saying that he wasn't really even trying but even so you can see that the speed he attained was very good. And take in mind, this is a inner city sort of central London site. So, and this is also during the day. So getting speeds like that is very, very good. The second L26 carrier for 3CA is not just present in London, however. It can also be found in Manchester, as this example here shows, as well as other large cities. And I've seen signalling for the third carrier, the second 2600 carrier, in other as well. So that will be coming in future. Now, to check that you are on the second 2600 carrier, you basically just have to either look for a 15 megahertz bandwidth, the cell ID, or the center frequency. The center frequency for the second 
L26 carrier is 3179 instead of 3350 and the cell IDs go 9, 10, 11 instead of 678 for the normal 2600 first carrier. And I guess carrying on from the subject of 2600 MHz carriers, a load of masts have been getting four-way receive diversity on 2600. So we're talking 2T4R. So that means that the mast is using four antennas to sort of listen as opposed to two. And what that basically means is you get the improvements to enhanced diversity of improved cell edge performance. And as we sort of discovered in the previous videos, cell edge performance is very important because users on the cell edge disproportionately weigh on the mast compared to those within the main footprint. So by improving your cell edge performance and limiting how much of a cell edge you even have, you can therefore actually dramatically improve the performance of the cell. And that's particularly important with 2600 MHz band because the range is quite sort of limited due to the penetration of the frequency. Having increased receive diversity improves the performance actually quite a lot, especially in terms of the uplink performance of the device, which can actually often be sort of a limiting factor. However, the aspect of coverage that has been most on people's minds is the 800MHz 4G that EE owns a paired 5MHz chunk of, but doesn't seem to have been doing very much of, at least certainly not before 2016. Now in a numerous sort of videos that I've made over the past, over the year 2016, I showed the sort of various different methods that EZ800 was being used at the time. Usually it's sort of very low power, um, sort of clear it's just sort of for testing, although at times with a CA device, the device was CAing with 800 and 1800. Fast forward to December 2016 then, and EE switched their 800 megahertz, so it was only accessible to Volte devices, and therefore had the ability to ramp up the sort of 800 output level, so that its footprint then exceeded all the other layers below, thereby increasing the coverage of that cell, of that mast, for devices that could access the 800 megahertz because they were Volte capable. Now, not all sites have been set up sort of in their final configuration with the high output 800 megahertz locked down to Volte just yet. Although in the areas that it has been done, people have stated sort of massive improvements to their 4G and their actual coverage full stops. So they've gone from say very weak unusable 3G to actually now quite strong and actually very fast 4G. So it has been a very significant improvement. And the way EE's got their 800 megahertz set up, it's above the priority level, the reselection priority level of 3G, which means that for devices that are Volte capable, once the 800 megahertz is fully enabled and set up sort of across the country and across the UK, 3G and 2G should be a thing of the past. Although, like I say, there are still some sites that need to be so sort of switched over to their sort of final configuration of 800 megahertz, and there are plenty more sites to be sort of upgraded and enabled for 800 megahertz 4G on EE. But certainly, as 2017 progresses, it should basically go nationwide the 800 megahertz, um, and more sites should be enabled to boost EE's overall 4G coverage to pretty astronomical levels even in a population even in a geographic definition as opposed to the sort of typical population figure that is used for coverage at the moment also in 2017 um i reckon ee may well do a second 4g carrier on the 1800 megahertz band so they then have 40 megahertz on the 1800 megahertz band or maybe i don't know 35 depending on their radio capability and then of course the 35 megahertz on l26 so i mean that would then mean 
70 megahertz of LTE spectrum, which is absolutely tons of the stuff. So um, thanks for watching this video about what EE has done in the year 2016. And I guess the final video of this series then to make is what Vodafone did in 2016. And Vodafone did quite a lot as well in 2016, which kind of breaks the whole roller coaster model, unfortunately.